Hey team, what's up? Hey, so we're here to talk about Jellyfin. So this is a newer program. Uh, I believe it's been out for just a little bit, but it's a program that's catching on and you know other users requested in the past. So uh, the good thing is we pretty, pretty much finished up the wiki for Jellyfin. So if you have questions about it, uh, this is it right here, you know, along with some steps. But we're gonna go through the steps with the video and then you're gonna see the actual execution of the actual program. So let me go ahead and bring up this right here. So I'm gonna like junk VM, and again, it's great to use virtual machines for testing, so you're not going crazy. So we're gonna go ahead and deploy Jellyfin, which is under the core apps. Just wait for that to pull up. All right, Jellyfin. So the install is relatively simple. But yeah, other than that, it's been an outstanding day. <laughs> so let's see what we got here. So it's loading up. Yeah, and it's really interesting about Jellyfin. Um, I'm going to do some more research on it and, and, and tweak it up in the wiki, a little bit more pass and stuff like that. Um, I didn't fully know that MB was uh, like actual like MB open source, like Plex was. That's what I'm tracking, it's open source. So I didn't realize that you know somebody had the ability to um, duplicate MB. Okay. From my experiences, I've gotten Jellyfin to work on my browsers, obviously. I haven't had it to work on any like native device apps. But um, if you're always using the web, you can. You can also cast. Um, I know for my phone it does, but you know, that again, it just depends on you. Okay, so it looks like it installed. So we're gonna go to jellyfinffplex.com. And this is the startup wizard. So uh, the one thing I do notice is that when you, um, we'll, we'll get to it, when you create an account, um, it for other users, it doesn't let you invite them because that's what MB does, but not Jellyfin. Not now. So just go ahead and make sure to put a username. I'm just gonna leave this for default for demo purposes. And then we're gonna go ahead. Um, you can add a library. So this part's relatively easy. It just depends what you want to do. Now, if you don't want to add libraries right now, you don't have to. That's just part of the setup wizard. So if you look at the wiki, let's see. So we'll do TV shows, right? Um, go ahead and bring this up. Uh, where are you at? Okay. So these are the paths right here that you see. See, it says setting up. So in general, you're going to use Mount Union FS. Now, it doesn't have to be TV or movies. It could be something else that you have. But one, you have to make sure that the folder exists. And, and two, that um, MB is able, I mean, uh, Jellyfin is able to see it. So if you got some folder in some offlandish place, it may not see it. So make sure it's somewhere in Mount and it can read it. Okay, so for demo purposes here, we're going to do Mount Union FS TV. And go back to the page so you can hit folders and yeah if, if you're used to using Plex you'll be like where's all my stuff at okay here it is right there and then you're just gonna hit okay now one thing I'm gonna tell you is is that unlike Plex now when Plex scans on the Google Drive it takes forever right Jellyfin and MB technically both uh, take a while to scan too the only thing is with Plex it kind of lets you know that hey here's some content Jellyfin and MB will throw you off so what you need to do is just once you got everything deployed just walk away and let it scan. Um, because you're gonna assume like, hey, this folder should be showing up, this folder should, should be showing up. It doesn't. You literally like have to just walk away for a few hours and come back. Um, and it's part of the reason why uh, I never actually set it up because I was always getting frustrated. And I'm just like, is this actually working? Is this scanning the drive? So if you got a huge library, you know, that does make a difference. Okay, so obviously you can set up different languages, countries if you want the sources where you get your movies from. So it gives you a lot of little granular options. As I put in the wiki, never turn this on because if you do, it will tax your processor and eat up space. Not that it really eats up that much space, but this will just tax your processor and increase the API calls to your Google Drive because it's constantly scanning your stuff and it's looking how to you know pretty much set everything up. So never check that, okay? So now that you did TV, you're gonna do movies. If you do, and again, this is optional if you want. And like I said, per the guide, see, we call it a day. And you can scan, I mean, you can click down there if you want to, but if you know your path off outright, you're pretty much good to go. So I'll do the same thing here. Okay, next. 
Next. So this is common sense. It says allow remote connections. So if you got a remote server, do not uncheck this. <laughs> um, and then it says enable automatic port scanning. I personally leave that on. You could turn that off. Again, it depends on you and security. And go ahead and hit finish. And that's pretty much it. Now, there's some small setting changes that you can make. And so you see how something's already picking up. But again, like I told you, Jellyfin, like you're like, where's all the stuff at? You're going to be going crazy, right? Again, like I said, just leave it alone. Now, if you're a Plex user, you're going to be a little thrown off like where everything's at because you're like, um, because I think right now I'm on the server view. Seems like it's even throwing me off right now. Dashboard. Yeah, okay. So if you click, so when you go to dashboard, it's going to give you all these options. So it kind of, it lets you configure, it lets you configure stuff here, like library. So think of the dashboard as like your super settings panel. That, that it, So if you're here, this is where you're basically configuring everything. If you want to get back to what you're looking at or look at shows, I believe it did the home. There you go. You see? And you see how stuff started picking up? So again, it could take a long time. It could take a short time, but I've, I've just learned to just walk away. <laughs> so again, I stress that. Okay. So users. Jellyfin's a little different because you can't invite users. Uh, let's see. Dashboard. So if you want to add a user, you're going to have to do add local user. So you're going to have to add them. It's not like an invite you can send. So, you know, you can call them here. You can call them beta tests. Uh, kind of like Plex, you can add, limit what libraries they can access. And then here, um, I'm actually impressed by the numerous amount of options that MB and, and, and uh, Jellyfin have offered because I stayed away from it forever. So disable the user if you just want to stop them. And then I, I, I have no idea. Usually you might outright delete them. Um, hide this user from login screens. So uh, this is a this is a good option sometimes because you may, like I said, it's like you may want to hide your administrative account. So it's good for protection. Um, allow remote control of other users. You probably don't want to do that. But again, there's a lot of there's a lot of settings you can do here. Now, before you do anything, you want to make sure that they have a password. So you're going to go ahead and do a password for them, and then you can implement controls on them if you want. And then basically you can do uh, access stuff. So kind of like what we saw here. And then you see how it even gets down into the weeds, like how you can access it. So again, I'm, I'm actually pretty impressed by that. And then here is where you can also limit their bit rate. So this isn't bad. Um, your server, your server uh, CPU may be increased because it's probably not natively streaming or it's going to do a conversion. But if you got a server with like not too much bandwidth, this is not a bad setting to set. Um, other than that, that's that's pretty much it. So everything else looks kind of self-explanatory. You know, if you want to go poke around, you can. You're like, ooh, I want to look at the logs, and I wouldn't mess up the ports. I wouldn't play with the certificates because that might mess up your stuff. I have not tested out the live TV and DVR yet, but it looks interesting. Uh, I do have something like that at home for Plex, so it's something that I do want to scan over time. So there's your devices, playback. So... And here's some good transcoding options too. So um, in the guide, in the wiki, there will be some information about the transcoding later on and how to take advantage of that. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed the quick video. I hope you enjoy um, checking out Jellyfin. It's a great alternative program. If you're, if you're running a Plex server, it's not bad to deploy uh, MB and or Jellyfin because it just gives you another avenue of approach if your Plex server is going down or something just goes haywire. And plus also, you may want to only give yourself access to Plex and then you can say everybody else can use MB or uh, Jellyfin. So it's pretty cool that it does offer those options. Um, if you, uh, like I said, thanks for being a member. Uh, thanks for checking out the video. If you could feel free to donate, that'd be awesome. Like the video, um, subscribe, it really does help out. And other than that, you have an outstanding day. <laughs>